Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about how you can date as a nice guy. In my last video I discussed whether women like nice guys, so in this video I'm going to discuss some practical steps that I think that you should introduce to your dating life so that you can be successful dating as a nice guy. So the first thing that you need to do is that you need to get really good at putting boundaries in place. So this is something that nice people struggle with in generally. And because of men's desperate need to be approved and wanted by women, this is definitely something that nice guys struggle with more than anything. And as I smile and as I say that, I'm smiling because I know that this is something that I've hugely struggled with. So boundaries are massively important. And no matter where you're at with your woman in life, you need to be putting boundaries in place. So if you're in a long-term relationship, you still need to be putting boundaries in place. And if you're just beginning to date somebody, you still need to be putting boundaries in place. If you're at the start of getting to know someone and you're just beginning to date, then I suggest using something that I call the two strike rule. This is something that I've used for the last year or so. And this is something that I have to say has actually been really beneficial to my dating life. And it basically just means that a woman has two opportunities. And if she does something wrong in those two opportunities, or she shows a lack of interest in those two opportunities, you move on from her and you decide you don't want to take it forward with her. So. Let's, let's visualize now that you've made a plan with a girl and she flakes on the day of the date. That's one strike. If she doesn't suggest another date or she doesn't suggest meeting up or she doesn't re-engage a conversation with you after flaking on you, that's two strikes. You move on, you archive the conversation and you never think about her again. But essentially it's basically saying that a woman has two opportunities to show you interest, to show you respect and to show you that she wants you. And if she doesn't, then that's fine. She's allowed to do that, but you're not gonna spend your time simping after her. You're not gonna spend your time craving her and instead you're gonna put a boundary in place and you're gonna move on and find someone else that does want you. But this is really important because you basically need to be the type of guy that's capable of moving on. And I know that this is something that generally speaking, nice guys tend to struggle with because they like being nice. They want to be liked and they want to be wanted. And the temptation for nice guys and the temptation I've definitely had for myself has been that if a woman hasn't shown that she likes me or wants me, I've pushed harder in order to hope that she does. I've pushed harder, harder hoping that something will change her mind. And it doesn't ever really work. And despite the fact that there's various things that you may have tried that have worked once or they've maybe worked twice, you need to have boundaries in place and you need to be capable of walking along. Because only when a woman sees that you're capable of doing that will she respect you. And whilst this may not be important with the first woman that you're talking to, if you become capable of putting boundaries in place and you become capable of moving on, it's gonna boost your confidence, boost your self-esteem, and then make you more desirable to the next person that you come to date because you've shown that you can move along and you've validated and verified to yourself that you can move along as well. Second thing that you need to do, you need to stop feeling so fucking guilty about wanting what you want. And you need to stop feeling so fucking guilty about going after what you want. So nice guys struggle with this. This is something that I struggle with more than I could even possibly articulate in this video. But when you, when you get older and you go through life, society will reward you for when you're nice. And generally speaking, the less you say what you want, the less you go after what you want, you will be rewarded because you will have an easier life. This is what is generally speaking referred to as following the path of the least resistance. And generally speaking, people or nice guys and nice people in general will follow that path because it's the one that comes with the least complications, the least chance of rejection, and the least chance really of upsetting anybody. So picture this now as a nice guy. You decide you want something, or you decide that you're not okay with somebody that someone that you're dating is doing. Rather than feeling comfortable to say that, rather than feeling comfortable in terms of talking about that, you sit, you manifest on it, and you start to think of in your mind all the things that that person has done to wrong you. Or maybe you do what a lot of guys do, where you start to think about all the things that women have done to wrong you. It's a really damaging cycle because you sit there and you fester. And the more you fester, the more you begin to internalize that. And the more, the more you internalize that, the less good that is for you. But the guilt aspect becomes really, really important because most people in life don't want to feel guilt. Most people in life, generally speaking, will actually do anything they can in order to, feel, in order to prevent themselves feeling guilty. And in fact, the two things that human beings tend to struggle with the most are guilt and shame. And both of those can go hand in hand as well. So as a nice guy, you will undoubtedly struggle saying what you want from a woman. And you will undoubtedly struggle saying what you don't want from a woman. Because you know that if you do that, there is a much more increased chance of guilt. So you need to sit with that. You need to experience guilt and you need to realize that guilt will come 
guilt will pass. And to be honest, the, the amount of guilt that you feel will not be proportionate to the amount of hurt or the amount of frustration that the other person feels. So stop internalizing guilt and stop internalizing shame and just say and go after what you want. Next thing that you need to do as well. You need to become a really charismatic, interesting communicator. So we know that women tend to like story. We know that women often at times tend to like drama. And we also know that women tend to like things that give them emotion. This is one of the biggest reasons why women tend to like bad boys. They can give story, they can give drama, and they can provide much more emotion. If you're a stable, nice guy, you're probably not going to do a huge amount that actually provides that emotion or actually provides that drama. So you need to find different ways that you can elicit a similar response to a woman. Or you need to find different ways that you can make a woman feel something for you. If you are a really good communicator, if you can tell a story really well, if you can engage a room or if you can engage a group of women or even one woman when you're talking, you will begin to elicit similar responses. A woman will feel emotion when she sees you talk. A woman will be attracted to you when she feels you talk and she hears you talk. And a woman will be attractive to your charismatic, confident presence. Now, as I say this and I talk about this, I'm making it sound like it's super easy to do. And truth be told, this is something that I've been working on for years and something I will continue to work on myself. But I can definitely say from my personal experiences, the better I get at communicating, the more capable I am of, of being like that on a date with a woman the more capable I am of communicating like that just with people in general. And I've actually realized the better I've got at it, just how unimportant things like a bad boy actually become because you are providing a similar sense of emotions and you are providing a similar sense of feelings. So you need to really get good at basic things such as storytelling, joke telling, and just really being able to engage a response from a woman when you ask a question almost at times being a little bit provocative and being afraid to say things that might seem a little bit out there. Sorry, not say things that seem a little bit out there. And also just really being quite aware that what you have to say matters and what you have to say brings value to a conversation. So as a nice guy, you probably don't feel those things. And as a nice guy, you probably look at louder, more engaging, more charismatic communicators in your mind and think that they have their opinion and what they have to say is much more valued. Again, this is not true what you have to say is valued and what you have to say should actually really be taken note of. So become really good at recognizing that first and foremost, but also become really good at talking and engaging every time you do it. Next thing that you need to do, you need to embody the characteristics of a protector and a provider. So some people are gonna say, don't be a nice guy and it's over for nice guys. I'm actually gonna say the opposite. I'm gonna say lean into your niceness and develop that into a set of characteristics that can make you really attractive. So we know that women aren't attracted to boys and we know that women are, generally speaking, much more attracted to what you would look at as higher testosterone, higher value, more confident, more dominant men. And the temptation can be to feel that as a nice guy, you're not gonna be able to provide any of that because it doesn't suit your natural still, your natural skill set. And the temptation can also be to look at people that are providing the bad boy characteristics and think that's what women want and they don't want good men. Trust me when I say this, women absolutely do want good men. You wanna be the type of man that a woman knows she can trust in the sense of crisis. You wanna be the type of man that a woman feels safe just when she has a round. You wanna be the type of man that a woman can look at and she knows that you have physically got her back. Now this may sound boring and this may sound just like a standard and almost as something that, you know, something that you think any man can embody. But I would actually challenge you and I would actually ask you just to go out and I would say just look at what the average man looks like. Does the average man really look like he could protect a woman in a crisis? Personally, I don't think so. Does the average man really look like he's bringing much more than just his niceness? I don't think so. So if you can be a nice guy, take those characteristics and turn those into the characteristics of being a good man. It is powerful, trust me, it is absolutely powerful. And this is something that I really do a lot now in my own dating life. I used to want women to see me as exciting, a bit raw, a bit like they didn't know what they were gonna get. And sure, that came with some results, but now if I'm on a date with a woman or I'm getting to know someone or I'm dating someone, I want them to see me as a protector, or a provider, someone who know that they know they could count on, someone who they know that they could lean on. And again, it has been really beneficial to my dating life because I'm being true to the characteristics that I wanna to bring to my dating life. It's never gonna be 100% authentic for me to wanna be exciting, for me to wanna be a bad boy. Like I could pass it, I could do it for a short period in time, 
But long term, I can't hold on to that. What I can provide, masculine traditional values, dominance and leadership when I need to, and physical strength and physical capabilities. And I can tell you as someone that's really embodying those characteristics, women like them and women do want them. Final thing that you need to do, and I would actually say that this is probably one of the most important things that you need to do. You need to stop comparing yourself to other men. So I know guys that do this. I have friends that do this all the time. They'll look at the women that they wanna be with, then they'll look at the guy that they see that woman with, and they'll say, I'm never gonna be able to get a woman like that because I'm not a guy like that. And this is such a negative self-fulfilling prophecy to tell you. And this is such a negative self-fulfilling prophecy to tell you because this is something that I know that you guys are probably doing. And it is so bad for you to keep doing it because you are telling yourself a negative story about yourself all the time. And if you're telling yourself a negative story about your time, I'm willing to bet that you've got pretty low self-esteem in general in life. And the more you compare yourself to other people, the worse you're gonna damage that self-esteem because we know that individuals with a low sense of self-esteem will use other people as a means of measuring and giving themselves their value. So if your dating life is basically consisting of not meeting the type of women that you want, and your response to that is then to compare the women that you want and the guys that they're with, it's gonna fuck you over and it's gonna destroy you pretty significantly as well. So you need to reframe away from doing that. You need to look at women that are with guys that aren't like you, and you need to either say that that's probably a woman that doesn't embody or share your values, or you need to look at the characteristic that, that characteristics that that guy has got and maybe see what you could realistically take away from it. But essentially, it's not about giving women the opportunity to give you value. It's about looking at what you can learn from the situation and give yourself value from that. And the problem is, is nice guys don't do that. They are terrible at giving themselves value. And again, this is something I've been terrible at. I've actually had phases in my life where I've almost taken on a kind of like a male Bridget Jones type character role, where I've seen myself as a nice guy, as a victim, as someone that's invisible to women. And I've just almost seen myself as kind of like this internal, this eternal bachelor that's never gonna find love because I'm too nice, because I'm too sensitive, because I'm too caring. And it's just really fucking damaging to do that because it cripples you the more and more you do it. So stop comparing yourself to other people and then stop creating a character as a result of that because the two of them often link so closely hand in hand. So these are my tips, these are my practical steps and I'm willing to bet that if you do those things you can take your dating life up several different levels and have a much more enjoyable and fulfilling dating life. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please can I ask you to click like and subscribe down below. And if you really liked it, I am also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching at the website also down below. But as always guys, take care and I will see you all in the next one.